If you'd like coaching, replay analysis, or a personal guide, or you're simply enjoying the content, please consider dropping a coin or two on Patreon. Thank you. I consider Puck vs Storm to be one of the more evenly matched battles. Both sides, depending on the skill of the player, have equal opportunities to outplay the opponent and come out ahead. Today, we'll discuss what kind of approach a Storm can take to do exactly that. First, let's remember what Puck does in a lane. Its nuke will usually be aimed towards both last hit and harass at the same time, ideally. Also doubles as a defensive mechanism. Buck Silence will act as a second nuke, but it is unlikely to be spammed. Thirdly, Phase Shift will be saved to dodge Storm's nukes. So overall, Puck has a lot of ways to deal damage and also dodge damage. However, once the skills are spent, it is extra vulnerable to Storm's nukes. We will use this strategy to drive Puck out of the lane. Our main course of harassment will be our attacks and overloaded hits, as Puck is unlikely to waste its Phase Shift to dodge simple damage instances. Despite Storm hitting more and receiving less thanks to armor differences, keep in mind Puck will also utilize the first skill for the extra harassment. For that reason, early level trades will result in Puck's favor, unless Storm has a salve. Our aim is to survive to level 3 without losing much farm. If the creep wave is in an unfavorable position, feel free to simply nuke the wave first and then attempt to chip at Puck from under its tower. In the meanwhile, let's talk about items. As mentioned previously, a self is highly recommended. However, if you don't feel confident after creep block, you can instead nuke the wave, secure the second creep, and have a bottle shipped to yourself before minute 2. It is a risky play, however, as an uncontested puck, if having a good time in lane, will usually save his illusionary orb to reach the rune first. With this in mind, finishing the null and opting for another self and mangoes is a pretty standard selection. In this match, I have bottle queued up, but if things go wrong, I am ready to instead double down on the non-bottle option. Back to laning. Once we hit level 3, it is where we unlock Vortex and can begin making plays. Standard combo is for Storm to pull the target in, release Overload, and drop a remnant. However, against a puck, we need extra planning to make it happen. Let's consider these scenarios. If you are low, puck might begin playing more aggressively, and use its first spell offensively. This is a good time to counter-attack. If there's creeps nearby, Puck will dodge the remnant with E, but will still have to eat the overloaded auto-attack, which deals about the same amount of damage, and you can still follow up with the right clicks until the orb comes off cooldown and Puck shifts out. The opposite is true too. If it's the puck that is low on health, then it will probably attempt to dodge the overloaded hits, which leaves it open for a full remnant combo afterwards. Again, be aware of the orb when considering whether to go for a kill or just to deliver damage. Lastly, if the last enemy creep is about to die and the orb is in cooldown, consider using your combo then. If you successfully combo Puck every now and then, it's either an eventual kill or freedom to travel to the ruins and camps. Remember, Puck isn't likely to use its mobility offensively if he has to save it for defense. Now, if for some reason the lane didn't go as planned, there's always the alternative option to simply nuke the wave and go jungle. This is doable because Puck doesn't possess heavy harassment capabilities like a Sky or Lina boot, and Storm faces relatively low risk by standing in the middle of a creep wave for a few seconds. However, the downside is that Puck will free farm too, has good wave clear, and you will either have to check selves to stay healthy, or risk Puck invading you and your camps as you work near the lane. For this reason, I recommend trying to dominate your lane instead. The above directly influences how you should be building Storm too. If you're in good position to harass, overload will be key. If laning isn't going as planned and flash farming is the better choice, Remnant will help with that. Because I had decent farm and reached level 6 first, I am not afraid to show in the lane before Buck reaches 6 itself, as I know it cannot kill me. At Buck's 6, however, I make sure to only show up with near full HP, as even a farmless Buck can lock down Storm to death if Storm's low enough, especially with the help of a rotating support. Once laning rotation is established, you're basically free farming with no danger. 
The most important thing is to maintain rune control, as Buck is busy under tower. Even if at the moment the farm difference isn't that much, the mere fact that Puck cannot engage and feed on me significantly reduces its map presence. If he had a kill or two from the start with XP advantage, I'd sure have to abandon the lane sooner, and Puck being free would open it to have complete control over runes and possibly domination in the side lanes too. Let's recap most common mistakes. First one being rushing bottles straight away. Puck by default reaches runes faster, so you only want to rush bottle if you're confident Puck will be unwilling to travel to the rune, either by pinning it under the tower or following the illusionary orb and threatening a kill if Puck's low enough. Another risky situation is farming side camps near the lane, as if Puck has vision, it'll make it easy for it to orb right next to you and seriously disrupt your farming flow. Same applies to simply showing in the lane with low HP. If Buck's ahead, it will have enough nuking power to threaten serious damage or a kill. Cells mitigate both the above issues. And this pretty much concludes the early game phase. Unfortunately, in this match, by the time I have my 17 minute bloodstone and am ready to fight, the game is already decided thanks to the 10 0 LC and Wisp combo just waltzing their way through every single lane. In case that didn't happen though, my game plan would most likely be to try to wait out Buck's ult, then initiate and build BKB plus Lincolns for this match to counter both Disruptors and LC's initiations and Buck's lockdown. This concludes today's topic, I will leave you with just a little bit more of the match and spare the eventual fast defeat. Thank you for watching, good luck. Radiant's middle tower is under attack! Killing spree. That's Looks like Radiant closed.
close the blast doors. Let the fun begin. Dire Yeah.